Section 2.4, Atomic Weights. If you have 100 grams of water and it breaks apart into hydrogen and oxygen, you're going to get 11.1 .1 grams of hydrogen and you're going to get 88.9 grams of oxygen every time. So if you take that as a ratio of oxygen to hydrogen, you're going to have 88.9 grams to 11.1 .1 grams. When you divide that, you're going to get one or 8. 11.1 .1 fits into 88.9 eight times. If oxygen is eight times the mass of hydrogen, and there's two hydrogens to each oxygen, then that means that it is 16 times oxygen is 16 times more massive than hydrogen. So if H had a mass of 1, oxygen would have a mass of 16. It's 16 times relative. It it's, has a relative mass of, of 16, so it's 16 times bigger than hydrogen. So you can measure atomic masses using a mass spectrometer. And if we know that hydrogen had a mass, if hydrogen's mass is 1.6735 times 10 to the negative 24 grams, then oxygen is going to be 16 times bigger than that, which is 2.6560 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. You can see that these numbers are just awful. There, there's no way that you could use these. Like if you're talking about every imaginable compound, so many of them having oxygen and hydrogen, just dealing with these numbers would make no one want to do it. So there's a simpler way, which is an atomic mass unit. is going to be the average between a proton and a neutron. So 1 AMU is going to equal 1.66054 times 10 to the 24, negative 24, grams. So instead of using grams, which is would be all these awful numbers, tiny little awful numbers, you're just going to use 1 AMU in that place. So you would say that hydrogen would be 1 AMU and oxygen would be 16 AMUs. So by definition, the mass of carbon-12 is exactly 12 AMUs. So 1 AMU is 1 12th of a carbon-12 atom. What you'll notice if you look at the periodic table is the atomic masses, which are under every element, are not whole numbers. So if you have like 12s and 13s and 17s and 283s, you would, that would make sense if everything was a multiple of AMUs. But what you're going to see is that that number is actually an average or a weighted average of what is in nature. So there are various isotopes of every of every element. So for instance, for carbon, I've written down uh, carbon here as 12 AMUs, 98.93% of all the carbon that you can dig up in the, in the earth is gonna be 12 AMUs. That means six protons, six neutrons. That particular isotope of carbon is the most abundant. There is a tiny little bit, 1.07, which is 13.00335 AMUs. There's even a teenier, teenier, tinier bit of carbon-14, slight carb, you know, tiny percentage of carbon-14, which would be six protons and eight neutrons. So if you want to get the number that's on the periodic table, you are going to take the percentages as decimals, so I've written it over to the side, small, 0.9893, times 12, then plus 
13.0107, I just did as a decimal, times 13.00335 equals, and then add them together, all of the different isotopes times the, the percentage, the decimal percentage of, of how abundant they are, will give you the number that you find under the periodic table. Then you use that number when you are, are doing any work with atomic uh, masses because you can't say it's this or that. You best you can do is say that it's the average of all the stuff that you can dig up on the earth and then uh, that's the best you can do. There is a very expensive little piece of machinery that you can have in most very big colleges called um, a mass spectrometer. And a mass spectrometer can analyze like stuff. Like if you have a crime lab and you don't know what the stuff on the, your shoe was and you're not sure if it was explosive or whatever, you can put it in uh, a mass spectrometer and what it does is will tell you all of the atoms that are in that stuff. And the way they do it is they ionize it, uh, then they accelerate it with a, with a voltage, send it through a, a vacuum tube, through a magnetic field, and there's a curve in the tube right at the magnetic field. And the magnetic field will send the small guys, or the ones that are small ions, flying farther than the big heavy ions. It would be like going around a curve on an icy road. A very light car would go very far off to the side of the road. A big car wouldn't go as far because, because of its masses. So it essentially separates the masses. Then when it slams into a detector at the end, you can see that these guys arrive first, this one second, this one third, and then you can determine what was in it. Based upon what's in it and the amounts of what's in it, you can then determine or make an educated guess of what the stuff is. So you can make weights. So masses of atoms are compared to carbon atoms with six protons and six neutrons. So every, every mass is then compared to carbon, 12, and then its atomic mass units are assigned to it, or were 50 years ago, whenever, and if you have a new one, they will do a mass spec and find out how much it weighs and then assign its new amount to it.